So, first of all, Patti LuPone should be risen enough. And if you're one of those people who think she's overrated, well, go watch Dear Evan Hansen or something. Evita, as a normal obsessed Broadway fan would know, is a late 70s musical with music by Andrew Lloyd Webber and book and lyrics by Tim Rice, where we learn about Eva Perón, the first lady of Argentina during the late 50s. Now, with this premise alone, a normal person would be bored. Learning the history of a political figure and not even a political figure of my own country? Well, now you know how people outside the States feel about Hamilton. Evita went on to win seven Tony Awards, including Best Musical, Best Original Score, and Best Book. But why? Well, I am here to tell you why and to explain, based on my own opinion, on why Evita is probably one of the best musicals that has ever been written, in which we will divide this fun little essay in three parts. Score, story, and acting. So, let's start, shall we? First of all, score. I personally am a composer and have been for a few years, so, you know, I could easily just make a separate video explaining in full detail the music of Evita and analyzing the late motifs, but I'll try to be as direct and concise as I can be. Now, the music composed by Andrew Lloyd Webber has always a pattern of sorts. His essentials reign from 7th 4th tempo to delicious guitar riffs and characters singing for their life. And Evita is that. Let's start with his leitmotifs. A leitmotif is basically a piece of melody in which we reference a character with, such as the melody of Don't Cry For Me Argentina represents Eva. The dice are rolling melody represents Perón. And I'd be surprisingly good for you represents Eva and Perón's relationship. And what baffles me from a musical standpoint is how these melodies are arranged in such a way where we can remember them even though there are more than 25 late motifs and we can remember all of them. Why? because Lloyd Webber knows how to make catchy tunes. People who have never seen Evita know the classic melody of Don't Cry For Me Argentina. But once you start watching Evita, you suddenly know all of them. Now, let's get to the orchestrations. So, the orchestrations have varied throughout the years in this musical, as does most of the musicals who have more than 20 plus years. I personally prefer the original concept album recording because it just feels so so raw and so original. You basically need a whole rock band plus a whole orchestra plus Latino band to make this musical as it ranges from full on rock to tango to just classical. From an orchestra director's mind, it's definitely a headache. Finally, let's get to the character's voice. Now, it's very well known that Lloyd Webber always pushes all his singers to the absolute limit. I'm a firm believer that he pushes his singers one whole range up, making a tenor, an alto, and a mezzo, a soprano. And I think that this particular musical is very good proof of it. Starting with the protagonist, in the original music book, Eva is described as a mezzo, ranging from probably a D3 or so to a hectic G5 belted. Man, just as a comparison, Jesus in Jesus Christ Superstar gets to a G5 with falsetto. Evita has to get to a G5 with her chest. Then Che is described as a tenor, ranging from a low A2 to a falsetto in F5, just one tone below Eva. Though in the original concept album recording, Che reaches very high notes with a chest in Good Night and Thank You and Oh What a Circus. Whatever you're smoking, Lloyd Webber, I'd love to smoke it too, sir. However, some notable changes came when the show was brought on stage, where the rock-driven song The Ladies Got Potential was actually changed for The Art of the Possible, which went more into detail on how Perón got into power. As much that I actually like the backstory that is put into this song, I really have a problem with this one, guys. I, I know, I know, I shouldn't be saying bad things while I'm saying that this is one of the best musicals and all, but even the brightest stars have a little freckle, and this is it. 
Plus, The Lady's Got Potential is just an amazing rock song, but that's just me. And so, only because of that little song, I give Andrew Lloyd Webber's score a 9.2 out of 10. Now, let's get to the juicy stuff. The book. Now, everyone knows that the God lyricist Tim Rice is just as essential as any famous composer, with marvelous works such as The Lion King, Aladdin, Jesus Christ Superstar, Aida, among others. So, you know, we obviously know that the dude can write some stuff. In the case of Evita being mostly an opera, which I don't really know if anything is actually said without singing it, basically the lyrics are the book, so he was credited as the book writer as well. So, you know, let's imagine a scenario. Let's say I want to show that Evita wasn't actually a big deal. She was just a, a comforting figure, but not at all one that could actually help. Now let's translate it into Team Rice lyrics. You let down your people, Levita. You were supposed to have been immortal. That's all they wanted, not much to ask for. But in the end, you could not deliver. Let's imagine another scenario. Let's say that I want to show that Evita is very, uh, well, convenient in a man's life and uses him solely for the purpose of getting on top. Now let's see how Rice writes this. Good night and thank you whoever, you've completed your task, what more can we ask of you now? Please sign the book on the way out the door, and that will be all, if she needs you she'll call, but I don't think that's likely somehow. My point here is not only to show my great voice, but to portray how Rice thinks of a situation and does it very stylish. I've never really been a fan of a composer and a lyricist being two separate people because you know, it's very hard to find a lyricist that actually gets what the composer wants. But this, among other work of Rice, just goes to show how much of a god he actually is. There is one particular song that caught my attention when listening to the cast album for the first time, which is Peron's latest flame, in the past called Dangerous Jade. I love this song because it portrays the mentality of men and high society towards Evita, who we all know comes from poverty, and how she is not welcome into their society, going as far as calling her a slut, a bitch, saying, quote, her only good parts are between her thighs. She should stare at the ceiling, not reach for the stars, or she could be his last whore. Unquote. Like, holy shit, man. You must really hate this poor woman. That's the thing, though. It's extremely raw and, and, and direct and, and sexist. And that's what Bryce wants to portray. That they didn't even know the woman. and They hate her a lot. And with Lloyd Webber's music, Man, this is just an amazing song. An amazing musical, for God's sakes. Just because there are little blips and bops around there, I give Tim Rice's book a 9.1 out of 10. Finally, the acting. So, we got a great musical with a great score, an amazing book. All we need is the people who can actually pull it off. The cherry on top of the Argentinian cake. The original Evita, and I mean like the first person who actually portrayed Evita, was Julie Covington. She sang the songs on the original concept album, and I mean, man, those pipes, the woman can scream. However, she actually turned down the role for stage, saying that her voice would be lost on theater, which like, I mean, I love divas as much as the next guy, but come on, sweetie. And so, the relatively newcomer and queen of my heart, Elaine Page, originated the role of Evita on stage with David Essex as Che and Joss Ackland as Perón. And you know, I wasn't alive yet, but from what I've heard, it had terrible reviews. But after that, it obviously became the monster that it is today. And I can argue that it became that monster because of the Broadway cast. When the musical started gaining love and appreciation, as all musicals should, Broadway said, I'ma do it too. But the cast, um, and the cast, infamously, queen of the world, 
Patty Lupone as Evita, Mandy Patinkin, Mr. Inigo Montoya himself as Che, and Bobby Gunton, Shawshank Redemption, Daredevil Dude as Peron. I mean, wow, that cast, man. And again, I still hadn't been born by then, but I heard that it was great. Lupone and Patinkin went to win Best Actress and Best Actor Tonys, respectively. And I mean, Lord, oh Lord, my Lord, the Lupone's Tony performance of a new Argentina. Jesus, Joseph and Mary. She reaches those notes as if it's the last thing she's gonna do in. I only learned this a few weeks ago, but Lupone went on record saying that she had a lot of trouble on reaching those notes, but she's just such a queen that she won't let us even get a glimpse of that. You go, Queen Lupone. And I do have to mention, I'm sorry I'm, I'm staying so much on Patty, I just love her so much, but her live performance singing Don't Cry For Me Argentina, I mean, oh, you can't help but cry all the way to the end. I truly, truly wish that I was alive to watch her perform live. And so, for this cast, and honestly just guessing the acting at this point, I give them a 9.5 out of 10. With the total of the score, book, and acting, we get a staggering 27.8 out of 30 for this amazing, amazing musical. Though, you know, it's just my opinion, darling. So, as a final comment, Evita truly just shows that some musicals survive the test of time. There's only a handful of musicals that get revivals and shine just as bright as they did many years ago. The music, the lyrics, the characters, the emotion, it's always the same. So, as my dear Evita said, I'm Argentina and always will be. So I'm new to all this stuff on YouTube, so I'd really appreciate it if you could subscribe, leave a like, all that good stuff. Please comment if you actually agree with my ratings. Uh, comment why you may disagree. I actually love to know your opinion. And if you have any suggestions on what musical should I analyze next, go ahead. I'm all ears. Thank you so much, and I'll see you later, darlings.